the alkyl halide can be reduced using the nascent hydrogen. Okay. The sources of these nascent hydrogens are zinc HCl, I mean a metal and an acid, zinc acetic acid. You can also go with metal and the basic medium, then sodium ethyl alcohol. Then, of course, zinc copper couple in alcohol. What is this? You know, this zinc copper couple in alcohol, in say ethyl alcohol, it is prepared by adding granulated zinc, granules of zinc to copper sulfate, right? Upon which copper deposits on zinc I think you know why you know copper deposits on zinc because If you consider the SRP values, I mean the standard reduction potential values of zinc and copper, SRP of zinc is less when compared to that of copper. More specifically, the value of SRP for zinc is minus 0.76 and for Copper, it is 0.34 volt. Now, looking at the values, it is very clear that zinc has lesser SRP than copper. So, copper undergoes a reduction readily. Okay. Moreover, I can tell you two things. Copper plus two reduces point number one. The second one is zinc is more reactive than copper. You know, if SRP is less, SOP will be more. The one with lesser SRP or greater SOP is more reactive. SOP stands for standard oxidation potential. Now the copper in uh, copper sulfate is in plus two oxidation state. So that gets reduced and gets deposited on zinc. Okay. So this is interesting. And I also have something called Devardas alloy. These are all special. See, Devardas alloy is an alloy consisting of zinc, copper, and aluminum. Hope you know what alloys are. Right. Now, another preparation method wherein we have a different reducing agent hydrogen iodide in the presence of red phosphorus. It's very simple. You can remove iodine 
okay not just alkyl iodides you can take the alkyl halides any of the alkyl halides if you consider the reactivity order of the alkyl halides then of course alkyl iodides are most reactive then alkyl bromides then alkyl chlorides finally alkyl chloride it is of course very clear that the alkyl iodides are with greater bond length and lesser bond strength okay so alkyl iodides are most reactive among the different alkyl halides so hydrogen iodide red phosphorus is a, a different reducing agent okay now let us take another preparation method that is from grignard reagent now what are grignard reagents first the alkyl halides react with the magnesium metal in the presence of dry ether to form alkyl magnesium halide now alkyl magnesium halides are called grignard reagent okay let us consider these alkyl magnesium halides on hydrolysis see for convenience let me take it this way not just water but any other thing that has acidic hydrogens or active hydrogens see in place of water you can take any compound that has acidic or active hydrogen right see uh, hydrogen is said to be acidic or active if it is connected to a highly electronegative atom like oxygen or if it is connected to say sp hybridized carbon like for example the hydrogens of acetylene okay so not just water you can take any compound that has acidic or active hydrogen that's it we get rh plus this magnesium hydroxy halide supposing if we consider heavy water in place of ordinary water 
Even this can be written as DOD for convenience. The same thing. You get deuterated alkane. RD plus MG X OD. That's it. So the reactions with the isotopes other than the regular one, like in this particular case, we have taken heavy water. This actually is very important in understanding the mechanism. In order to trace out the mechanism, the isotopes are generally used. So they are actually called radioactive tracers. Of course, this is not radioactive here. We know that the radioactive isotope of hydrogen is tritium, right? So this is from the Grignard reagent. Now, the very important named reaction called Wood's reaction. Let us first see what uh, Wood's reaction is, the basic reaction. In which alkyl halide reacts with the sodium metals in the presence of dry ether to form alkyl. Now, let me show you what has happened here. Take them in this fashion. Okay. This is how sodium halide is eliminated and you get a symmetric alkyl. Symmetric, right? You know, Wood's reaction is actually meant for the preparation of symmetrical alkanes in good yield. Now let us see the mechanism. I have two different types of mechanism. The first one is ionic, which is in fact the most accepted one. I also have free radical mechanism. Okay, let us first see what ionic mechanism is. Now we have sodium metal. Take that. Sodium atom loses electron to form Na plus. So you got electrons now. Now consider the alkyl halide. Add the electrons to this. You know the two electrons? Get added to the R group, which then becomes R minus. Hope you all know that one minus refers to a pair of electrons. Now even X is leaving in the form of X minus. Now this R minus will attack on the other molecule of alkyl halide. Remember this molecule of alkyl halide which you are considering now 
this has to be a lesser hindered one okay because here the mechanism is sn2 now r minus attacks from the back side and we'll get this r r the next minus you have actually got n a plus so this combines with n a plus n forms sodium halide so the point that to be noted here is here the mechanism is sn2 so in general the alkyl halide has to be a less hindered one a less hindered one in the sense it has to be a 1 degree one a 2 degree one but not a 3 degree okay we'll take some examples after the free radical mechanism so this is ionic mechanism now it's the second one of free radical mechanism so in this sodium atom loses an electron to form na plus take the alkyl halide plus the electron now see the bond between the alkyl group and the halogen atom undergoes homolytic fission which is shown using a fish hook arrow okay which refers to the transfer of one electron to the bonded atom so the alkyl group get one electron x gets one electron and to that you add this electron then that becomes x minus nothing but two electron so this is homolytic fission okay now consider two such alkyl group form a bond between themselves to give alkene okay let me just consider some example supposing if methyl chloride is treated with sodium metal in the presence of dry ether simple just take the mirror image of this okay ch3 Then another situation. You get ethane. In a similar way, 
if ethyl chloride, it's better if you consider ethyl iodide. Okay. Ethyl chloride with the sodium metal. Again, in the presence of dry ether, even here also, it is the mirror image of this part. CH3, CH2, CH2, then again, CH3. Okay, this way. Now, if a mixture of methyl chloride and ethyl chloride is taken, what do we get? Is an interesting discussion. Let me give you that. The methyl chloride and then ethyl chloride. When this mixture is treated with sodium metal in the presence of dry ether. Interestingly, we get five product. Okay, let me show you. See, the first one, of course, is Ethane, let me go with the, the free radical mechanism. So, see from this, we get methyl free radical. And from the second one, no, it has to be here. We get ethyl free radical. We'll of course have many such free radicals in the mixture because it's really not possible to carry out the reaction taking a single molecule. So, let me take the second one. Now, two ethyl free radicals combined to form N butane. Right? Take the mixture methyl free radical with ethyl free radical. Now these two combine to form propane. Right? Now the interesting part. We can actually consider a methyl free radical and uh, the ethyl free radical, but uh, in a bit different manner. Look at the way I'm considering. So this is the ethyl free radical. Now this bond uh, undergoes homolytic fission. What happens then? You get a free radical here and you get a free radical at hydrogen. Now, look at what happened. Combine these two. Combine these two. So this is interesting. So you get 
methane from the first part and see ethylene from the second part. So this is very interesting. People generally say that methane cannot be prepared by Wood's reaction. No, it is very much possible. Look at how. You also got alkene. See, this is your first product, the second one, the third one, then this is the fourth one, and this is the fifth one. So you get five products when you take a mixture of two different alkyl halides. Now, the next point is, what if moist ether is used? Why is dry ether used? Why not moist? You know, when moist uh, thing is used, That is when there is moisture, the metal, sodium, reacts with water. When sodium reacts with water, we get sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. Now, this sodium hydroxide reacts with the alkyl halide to form alcohol. So rather than getting uh, the desired alkane, we get alcohol. Okay, then. What if a tertiary alkyl halide is used? So this is a three degree alkyl halide. When treated with sodium metal in the presence of dry ether. Now in this case, let me consider ionic mechanism. You get an electron. This goes off as Br minus. Then, of course, you have to take two such electrons. You get CH3 minus. Now take another molecule of the same tertiary butyl bromide. Look at what happens. See, as and when this attacks or abstracts the hydrogen, this is what uh, is going to happen. And finally, the products that we are gonna get are, one is isobutane, the other one is isobutylene. Okay, isobutane, then isobutylene. So this is very interesting. Rather than getting a dimerized product, you get different products because it's a three degree alkyl halide. As I said, it doesn't undergo SN2 type of mechanism. 